What's up everyone? I am Lady Ray Ashlyn Dragon Elf and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe to the notification bells so you are alerted of when I have new content. A little slow there, I'm figuring out what I wanted to say. But anyways, on my channel, you will find that I do once a week vlogs. I am planning, as I have mentioned in previous vlogs, to do little snippet stuff. I just have not gotten around to it. I am in a bit of a little bit of a depression, so that's probably why I haven't done it. And also just trying to figure out how to do stuff, which I'll get I get into the depression and the do stuff later in the vlog. But anyways, yeah, once a week I upload one vlog. Uh, I've decided on Mondays, but I decided that since I had a couple things I had to do yesterday and the vlog, I was concerned if I were to work on it, it would take me. It would be too much of a distraction on top of what I had to get done. And also on my channel you'll find that I have a wide array of, um, not vlogs, videos that I like and enjoy. So you can just check all those out if you got a chance. There's a lot there, believe me. Because I like collecting playlists of videos that I like. Now, uh, today is vlog number 24. And, well, let's see. I am making a lot of progress on my daily hand art series. That is my official name for my series of daily art. Um, my daily art, as I, have men as I mentioned in my last video, e e is where I draw context is just for the hand. I'm alternating between left and right hand on my drawings, but there's some sort of theme to it. I've done a dog, I've done train, I've done an SR-71. Those ones, I believe, are my latest. Uh, you can find my uh, daily hand art series on my Twitter, on my Instagram, and on my Ello. I do have it on my Facebook, but Facebook is much more towards family-based, so I'm not, I'm not adding anybody on there unless there's like some side reason why I'll, why I'll add you guys. So that's why you will not see my social media for link to Facebook down below. But yeah, I, I'll go ahead and pop up like one or two of my hand art series right here. Okay, so yeah, that, that's what I'm working on. It's a lot of fun. I've got new pens, actually. They're right in front of me. Now i got to figure out which one's which. Okay. So yeah, I do have new pens. They're all Faber-Castell. This one here is a lot of fun to work with with the browns. It's got like a sapia tone to it. Or it is sapia, but uh, working with this one and a sapia-like highlighter pen... That I've got. I ended up getting a really neat effect. It was, oh, it was my balloon one. That was that one, that one is my latest um, hand art series drawing that I did a balloon one. And that was where I used uh, the bee right here on to draw to color in the hand, and it actually turned out really cool. Interesting thing about that: the color of the hand balloon was the fact that I was catching depending on the lighting, it was catching like a red tone, it was catching a sapia tone, a dullish brown, and also there was bits of yellow in it, which is very weird and interesting. And I've also got, for my pens, I've got this, this set here. I have not had the XS before, which is very thin, and that's really, it's really nice nice to have because depending upon like my lines how thick I want them is pretty difficult using like even the small and such. I do have um, the SFF and an SFM and a B which is in this package here. Uh, another black set of pen those pens. Uh, those ones do seem to be like a darker brown, darker black, excuse me than these ones because these ones seem to be like a little dull and faded slightly but yeah just layering the color layering these pens 
I get the same I get the same effect but yeah these ones are actually a lot of fun to work with I really enjoy the SB that SC was interesting to play around with and the 1,5 for 1.5 that one's kind of interesting to work with too but I really like the SB that one I was playing around a lot with doodles the other day yesterday I think it was or was it the day before I don't know my earbud keeps slipping off my ear a little bit but yeah, I, I really enjoy the Faber-Castell pens. I recommend them if you're going to be like doing like line arts with your drawings. Or even if you're just doing doodles like I did. Which I have right here in front of me. A notebook. I don't know where my mom got me this from. But she got it for me and it's really cool. Uh, the pages. If I can get this thing open. Oh like set of pages has a a different thing like this though, though it does repeat what's there like this one here Oop, if I can get the camera over as oh, that way the I can't tell what the heck I'm doing with this thing but anyways I was doodling in this I didn't really have a plan on like what to do with it before and like I started I started doing a bit of um, poetry in it, but then I stopped but yeah I drew that flower and that one was just kind of playing around with it I was using the SB pen on those and I skipped the page there on accident hey no I'm not not that page not the one after there we go and then here was just some mindless doodles that I did I did a teapot you, this one here I used a brown and sepia in it. Uh, most of this was done with um, the SB, but I also used, I think, like maybe a medium one or something like that. What color is that? That's black. So that one I think I used maybe medium or something on it, or the M. But yeah, I have I was doodling a bit in this with the pens, just trying to play it around with them a bit more than just kind of scribble on a paper but scribbling on a paper kind of helps too because you get an idea for how the pen works and such so yeah next on my list i have decided my main storyline or the general main storyline of my cypern series my cypress series that I've decided it's called the Cypran Tales. I'm not going to tell all of you really much about it right now because it's going to be a future thing that you're going to learn about because it's really just a secret surprise. That's what I'm trying to get at. But um, I am going to be working with two other individuals on this. I need to look into, cause since I do want to get this, this series published, um, I figure I would just start with writing it, working at it, um, and maybe post, upload on different websites, bits and pieces about it, and also get a website up and running for it, pertaining to it, uh, before I go ahead and get it published, if I can, because there's going to be multiple authors behind it, because I'm going to be working with two other people, to create these stories currently it's just two other people that i'm planning on working with but i like the idea of how my storyline is going to go so it's yeah i'm excited i'm definitely excited and i've um i was working on bouncing around I, a couple of ideas for design for one of the people for their character um their persona in the world as later as my persona i've got the design down i do want to revamp the bow though um in lord of the rings online i ended up getting a really cool bow that i really like i love this bow um and i want to design the basic shape redesign the basic shape of my bow off of that keep the color scheme but maybe add in a little bit of blue i don't know but i want to yeah i want to revamp that um so yeah Designs are still in the work of progress for characters and such. Uh, the world is still being built. I still have not redone 
world maps, which is something I do need to work on. I have a lot of stuff to work on for that. It's going to take a few years, I expect, to get the Cypern Tales in a position where they can be published. So, oh, you're going to have to bear with me on that. Um, oh, yeah. My phone is connected to the charger right now because the phone battery, it's having issues. It's not holding the charge like it should because I know I am using my phone a lot and that does drain the battery but at the same time I was like I stopped using it and it was I got up I got my phone off the charger excuse me somewhere around like 6 30 and then um 9 9 30 when I looked at my phone when I was writing down my notes for today's vlog I had like 30 30 something odd percent charge which is the battery should not have gone down that much. So I'm going to get the battery changed on my phone. Because this is definitely a necessary thing for me to have. But speaking of electronics. I, I do wonder. Is that are the people like PG&E. Um, the people that are running electricity and water. That's, that sort of profession. Are they being thanked for helping keeping the world running? Because I think, honestly think that they're the ones that are keeping the world running a bit more than the healthcare workers. I'm not, I'm not downgrading the healthcare workers, but it just... Uh, sorry, I got distracted by my mom uh, uh, in the other room. But the healthcare workers, they are doing a lot of work. They're, they're the ones that are at the front line. You cannot say no to that. But the people that are keeping the electricity, the water running for different households and such, especially when like there's some people that they can't, they can't um, work, they can't get an income, so they can't pay the bills. So it's like these people that are helping with the electricity and whatnot, they're, they really do deserve a huge thank you and a lot of support for their contributions to society. And uh, like another question that I have, aside from why, why does it not seem like they're being thanked, is why are the children that were taken from parents that were deported, that are illegal immigrants, I guess you could call them that, let's find behind your take on it. I Before COVID-19, I was seeing a lot of talk about them on the web, and now I was like, they're not even being spoken of, and even in like, People that have been posting it about it, all of a sudden I'm not seeing it. And I'm, it's disconcerting is what's transpiring with them. And they're, they're, from what I like her, they're really in tight quarters. I don't know for sure if that's true or not, but if they are, then they're, they're probably going to be able to catch COVID-19 and spread it very, very quickly in those in the living conditions that they're in so are we taking care of them are we getting them out into safe as is they, they've already got a sh shit ton of psychological trauma because they were forcefully taken away from their families and their families were separated as they were it's not right really not right so my i'm worried what's going on with them Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go on about my depression and what I'm doing about that and how I'm going to go through with everything. So I am mildly depressed. I'm not as bad as I have been in the past in regards to depression, which is very, very nice. Um, I have emailed my psychiatrist. I've inquired about... Uh, PTSD, it's not, you're not really tested, it's really just a discussion with your therapist or a medical practitioner of some sort, probably a psychiatrist too. And he ended up asking me, sorry, trying to get my sarong over my arm and my phone slipped. Um, he ended up asking me about like my past, have I been like traumatized, severely traumatized, which I have been bullied a lot. My life has been not necessarily threatened. 
but insinuated that this person would do this. Because there's um uh that I remember that there was a set of twins, one of them was pissed and shared with a friend of a friend, which was my friend and their friend as well, at that point in time anyways, um, shared with them that if I got her sister, her twin sister expelled, she was going to hurt me. I don't, I think, I think it might have been said that she was going to beat me up. She was, she was going to hurt me. She threatened it. Um, my friend didn't say anything. Um, at the time, I wasn't exactly vocal about what was transpiring and such as I was really I held a lot of stuff in so I didn't really say anything about it which is why with this other kid um he I think I was in seventh grade or something like that um twice he insinuated threatening stuff the uh, first one was or one of them I don't know what order it was in but one of them he th essentially threatened me that when we were going to dissect a frog he was going to dissect me um i think honestly i think i had asked to be moved away from him when we did that project and i think potentially i may have asked when i didn't get moved when I, before the project before the school assignment to dissect the frog was starting I'd asked um, the, our teacher if I could move because he was threatening to hurt me, dissect me. I think I might have even said that. Uh, but I, either I didn't say that, and so the teacher was like, okay, just go ahead and move. Or I did say it, and the teacher never said anything else to anybody else. And none of the, none of the students said anything. I don't. I really, that's just a speculation because I cannot remember exactly what happened there. But I do remember uh, when we did fire drills um, and he, that same student, um, threatened that if there was a real fire, he would lock me in a classroom and watch me burn. I've, I have no idea what was going through his head. I have no idea why he was behaving like this. It, it's extremely disconcerting. I feel, I know I am a little chilled because it is kind of cool, but I do feel like a chill in my core when I think about that now. As it was, it was something that if, if I had voiced what was transpiring with the student to the staff, like the principal and such, was the principal, he was phenomenal, he was absolutely great. Um, my, my eighth grade teacher was absolutely great too, except I don't, I don't really remember him that very, I don't remember him in a good light. Was, I was in a very bad spot then and such, but yeah, it, anyways, it was in seventh grade, I, that, if I had voiced about what was transpiring with him, he would have been expelled and I wouldn't have had to deal with him. But at the same time, I don't remember if in that class I had mentioned that he was going, he was threatening to dissect me or not. But I was, I was extremely relieved to be moved away from him. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I have experienced trauma. I have been bullied a lot. Um, the disassociation, my um, psychiatrists had said that it could, it is also a side effect of depression, anxiety, which does make sense. So maybe that I do not have a PTSD is just a part of what I already have. So I just need to figure out how to work with it. I think I'm going to go in for a second walk after I finish this video, just to clear my head after sharing that story. Oh, okay, so um, my plan is, since I, I am in contact with my psychiatrist, I converse more with him. I do ha now have, as of yesterday, or yeah, yesterday evening, I have an appointment with my, my therapist, 
uh, in July. I don't know when, but it's at 4 p.m. The other option I had was like 7.30 and I don't even know if I'm going to be awake at that point in time in the morning. Because some mornings I do not wake up that early. Uh, I had been, I did have my alarm clock go off at 6 and then I shut it off because I was awake before that and didn't feel like listening to it going off. And it took me several days before I turned it back on. My fault. Uh, I think I'm trying to kick into laughter a bit to help cope with that story, that bit of, that I sort of have in my memories, but I definitely feel the, the pain from it, which is why I've decided to share a funny story um, at the very end of this video, just kind of help lighten the mood, unless you have a phobia. I will get there. Uh, don't worry, I'll get there. I'll warn you. So, yeah. Um, I did get um, an offer about consulting with a transformation life coach um, when I had uploaded my inquiry online with a community that I'm a part of, um, inquiring about coping mechanisms and working past the trauma. And so I am going to inquire with them about what is it like, what is it about, as I feel that um, consulting with my psychiatrist, therapist, and them would be very beneficial for me. I was planning on uh, consulting the person uh, yesterday, but I was just really raw, emotional, but I managed to get my email sent to my psychiatrist and got a response, read over it. So yeah, that's a plus. Um, sometimes like even if you say you're going to do it, you can't always just push yourself to do it until you're ready for it. And so it's something I've just kept in mind and also just not wanting to overwhelm myself too much too quickly with a bunch of stuff. So yeah. Now the phobia. I am well aware that there are people out there with a spider phobia, arachnophobia. If you do not particularly care for spiders or have this phobia, by all means, I have no problem with you guys ending the video because as soon as I'm done with my story, I'm going to go into my typical ending and call it good. So, if, yeah. If you, you guys want to go ahead and go, bye. I have no problem with that. Okay, so those of you that are still watching... Uh, spiders do creep me out a bit, but I respect them more, um, more so now than I did before. Um, so the other day, okay, there's two pieces to this. This is, does involve my kinship. Um, now my kinship, uh, there's members in it that are fearful of spiders, including one of them, and the, he, and it, ended up in a conversation with somebody else in the kinship about spiders and they were claiming that spiders will eat humans which they will not they will bite if they are bite type but if they do bite that means they feel threatened for some reason it is a self-defense assuming that they're biting a human this is you with those types of spiders you're better off giving them distance and respecting said distance um but I ended up commenting about that and mentioned that I, I don't know if I mentioned anything about me taking spiders outside, but I, I do catch spiders that are in the house and I take them outside. I go put them out on one of the bushes. And my mom will even call me to go fetch a spider and take it out. <laughs> um, but the one friend that was saying all this arachnophobia stuff and misconceptions about spiders ended up calling me a traitor because I sided with spiders and not them. Um, then a couple days ago I was not feeling too good. I had a very bad upset stomach but my mom and I were at a s store. I stayed in the car while she went inside. I had the windows rolled down and I was underneath the tree so there was shade. But I'm, I'm messaging back and forth with some of my kin members and Lo and behold, had an itty bitty little spider. A little smaller than that. I don't know. I don't know, I can't. I, I'm like very jerky, unsure how, 
how tiny I can get my fingers together without overshooting where I mean to go with it. But anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll share the pictures of that I sent my kinship and my kin members because uh, I did have a spider on me and I was kind of playing with it. It was a bit of a struggle trying to get these photos, I kid you not. Because the spider was continuously moving. But, uh, a couple of them commented, cut off that arm, <laughs> burn it. <laughs> because there was a spider on me. And when my mom returned, I managed to get the last photo and then I proceeded to blow the spider out the window. Because I wasn't going to take the spider with me. I honestly think I have brought spiders home with me. Because I'd be out for a walk and I remember I've like encountered like a spider web kind of dangling in front of me and got caught on my hat. And I thought I might have brushed a spider up onto the top of the bill of my hat. So then I get home and I look down at my pants and there's a spider. A little spider. Yeah. I, I typically don't have a problem with the smaller spiders, but the bigger spiders give me creeps. Um, but I'd much rather respect their distance. And put them where they, in a sense, naturally belong, which is outside. But at the same time, they can be very beneficial inside because they can catch the bugs. Which a spider decided to move into my room and be my new roommate. There's a cobweb right on the bookshelf right next to my bed. I will insert a picture of that too. Okay, I'll talk about spiders and phobias is done, which my hilarious, for me, the, the whole scenario with, um, with not being afraid of the spiders and the others being very fearful of it is funny, but at the same time, I do respect that they do have this fear of spiders and I don't want to just push it too much. But anyways, I'm going to wrap that up. This is the end of today's vlog. If you want to check out my channel, hit the button up there. And as always, I got my vlog playlist right there. You can check those all out. And of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, a lot of other videos they could check out too. Well, Ad Astra to the stars.